But there was to be no hint of sadness, only joy and celebration for those singing Celts as they strode towards their destiny. For the Celtic were there to win the cup, for a great city and a nation, to play the Celtic way, to thrill and to entertain, to be the first, to be the best, to be the champions. Familiar voices, including a young Shettleston school teacher, Archie McPherson, brought the city on the Tagus into our homes. Grainy black and white television pictures, crackling radio sets, some of which wouldn't have been out of place in Marconi's workshop. A dramatic, pulsating roller coaster of a match, a clash of style and philosophy, David against Goliath, the beautiful game, or Catanaccio, the bolted door, a game for lion hearts. We'll be running round Lisbon with the cup, caught in a thousand Scottish throats. Penalty as Renato Capellini tumbled and our dreams seemed tossed and blown. A Celtic storm, a hurricane, a whirlwind, Lennox, Murdoch, Wallace, Denied by the brilliant Giuliano Sarti, the man with the thousand arms. Heart-stopping moments when we reached for our Celtic cigarettes or perhaps something even stronger. Ronnie Simpson, feather, far from goal, displaying footwork that Astaire or Gene Kelly would have been proud of. And still they sang, we shall not be moved. And a pride of lions roared. Gemmel and Chalmers, paradise regained, Celtic triumphant, immortality assured. An explosion of joy, then the greatest Scottish charge since Bannockburn. Impromptu Irish jigs and Scottish reels and what was now forever a field of dreams. And high above them, in the Tribunia de Honra, the majestic McNeil, like an Olympic torchbearer, thrust the glittering prize into the blue Iberian sky. Diario de Notitias of Lisbon expressed the comprehensive and dramatic nature of the victory. The men from Glasgow took possession of the field, of the public, and finally the cup. This is